Hello, my name is Elena Pope and I'm a practicing physician in Toronto, Canada. I have been working and helping with research in FACES syndrome for the past 10 years. What I would like to share with you today is some tips that may help you once your child has been diagnosed with FACES syndrome. The first thing to realize is that having a child with FACES syndrome is not your fault. It is very common for parents with FACES children to experience a wide range of emotion, such as anger, a sense of loss, worry. Probably, though, the most common one that comes to the forefront is the feeling of guilt. To date, we know very little about what causes faces. Based on some of the vessels that are involved and changes in the structures um, that are common in faces syndrome, we feel that it's most likely due to an insult that happens very early on between six to eight weeks of gestation. Whether the genetics um, or the genes play a role as well is not clearly understood, and more research is needed in the future. Since we don't have a clear understanding and things are happening so early in, in gestation, it is unlikely that anybody can prevent having a child with FACES syndrome. The second thing is important to remember is that not all patients with FACES are alike. FACES diagnosis is made on a number of criteria, both major and minor criteria, that help a clinician to arrive at a diagnosis. At any given time when the patient is seen, he or she may meet a number of those criteria. It's very unlikely that one person will meet all the criteria that have been described in FACES. Because there are so many different criteria that make us help uh, arrive at the diagnosis, it also creates um, a wide spectrum of severity and presentations. Therefore, not two patients with FACES are alike, even when they actually meet the same number of criteria or the same criteria. It's important, though, to realize that to be aware of this variability, because when you read or hear about certain um, uh, presentations or complications, not all of them may apply to your child. If you have any concerns or any uh, questions about this, it's important to discuss those with your uh, treating uh, physician. Third thing is to engage in a partnership with your doctor. FACES is a very rare diagnosis with only about 300 patients reported to date. There are, fortunately, a few doctors um, worldwide that have a, a clinical expertise as well as a research expertise in FACES syndrome. Once you identify such a doctor, it's also important to realize that um, looking after a child with faces requires a team of specialists that work together to arrive at the best um, management and intervention strategy for those patients. Also, those um, management uh, plans are very different from patient to patient. One thing that I found that's very useful um, at, from the beginning is for you to have a very honest discussion with your treating physician or physicians about what expectations both sides have um, to arrive at a good therapeutic relationship. The things that will be important are to discuss expectations about interactions, uh, when and how to communicate if there are changes that concern you about your child, how frequent are the clinical visits, and how long do they uh, happen to be, 
what specialists are involved and what are their names and contact information. Whenever possible, depending on the hospital your, your child is being treating, uh, treated at, it's important to have one contact person um, whom you can be in touch with when you think that there are changes in your child's medical condition. This person can help you navigate the medical system and get the answers that you need in a timely manner. The first thing that will be important, I think, is to engage with the FACES community. FACES is a rare diagnosis. As such, uh, similarly to other rare diagnoses, you know, having a child with this condition can be very overwhelming and at times isolating. It's very likely that you will not find anybody in your family, amongst your friends, and even some of the medical professionals who are aware of what FACES is and what it means. By connecting with other families with FACES, um, a lot of parents feel less overwhelmed with receiving such a diagnosis. Medical professionals can provide factual medical information, advice, and um, intervention. But parents have a different perspective on what it, what it means to have a child with FACES syndrome. They may be able to provide practical advice, such as how to cope with the diagnosis, how to organize yourself, how to navigate the medical system, how to deal with daycare and school, how to react with negative interactions, and so on. How can you help? Knowledge is power. So as parents, it's, important not, it's very important to be knowledgeable about the diagnosis and potential complications. By attending, reading the literature, attending a specialized FACES meeting, you will be able to keep abreast with all the new information that may or uh, be relevant for your child's care. It is also very important to have all medical information organized. Um, whether you're visiting emergency room, a physician that may not be familiar with your uh, particular, uh, with your child's case, um, if you have all the uh, relevant investigations, uh, contact information with the uh, treating physicians, it will help a lot to facilitate getting um, rapid access to care as well as preventing maybe uh, adverse events uh, in case of uh, medication errors and so forth. Contribute to the knowledge by allowing your child to be part of the FACES research. As I mentioned, there is a lot more that we need to learn about FACES with respect to what causes it, um, what are the clinical uh, presentations, what are the complications, what's the best treatment that we can offer for those patients. This type of information can be available uh, to us only if we work together to advance the field by conducting proper uh, clinical and basic research. So get involved and allow your child to be part of this. After working with many, many families, um, I found that um, a lot of them struggle um, with um, emotional um, difficulties uh, related to having a child with such a chronic condition. It's very important for you to realize that being healthy, both physically and emotionally, will help your child. Um, I use the analogy of um, the airline industry where they advise that in an emergency uh, situation, a child should put uh, an oxygen mask first on himself or herself before applying one onto the child. Similarly, um, we need to um, look um, after the emotional and physical uh, health of parents in order for them to be able to care properly for their children. And lastly, uh, I urge you to become an advocate for patients um, with FACES. 
Um, you can be first and foremost an advocate for your own child by being uh, prepared, informed, and um, help um, navigate the medical system and getting the, um, the help that he or she needs. Second of all, you can be an advocate for the larger faces community by um, being part of the educational events that spread the words, um, part of the awareness events, as well as uh, fundraising events. I hope those few tips will help you um, a little bit, not only with the knowledge about what faces is, but how to deal with a child that has uh, faces. Thank you.